Nixon is extremely successful. Yeah, you know, it's I mean, doing really good. Should, 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 and I love playing in this band. Yeah. Everybody respects each other and we get along. Uh -huh. uh, d uh, put it, bring it down on a personal scale. Um, you, as a drummer, I mean, usually uh, female drummers are very, sort of, uh, they are very underrated. Uh, Power-wise, they don't seem to keep up with, uh, with, with men. Apart well, from probably, apart from Sheila E. Yes, Sheila E. And I mean, uh, what, 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 do, you, do you consider uh, this is um, something like really bad that you know men shouldn't think that way? Or, well, you, the reason they think that is because there hasn't yet been a female to blow their minds. I, I even think that way. I haven't seen a girl yeah. that I can actually say, not just she's good for a girl, she's a really good drummer. Hopefully I'll change that. Yeah. I'm not afraid to play. Uh -huh. My hands are all fucked up. Yeah. They're all callous and stuff. Yeah. The only girl that I could say that I thought was really good was Sheila E. Yeah. And yet she's real more of a fusion drummer. Hard rock drummers, I haven't seen one that could really hit, real yeah. aggressive yeah. playing. And that's what I want to do. Yeah. You think I want to be compared yeah. to Tommy yeah. Lee or Tommy yeah. Aldridge. Yeah, you think you're aggressive enough. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you think so? Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you a lot more than, so. than, you know, like girl school drummers and... But see, I'm, when people come up to me, they don't just say you're good for a girl. Yeah. They don't say that anymore. Uh -huh. They go, you're a really good drummer, and that's what I want to hear. Uh-huh. So you uh, you think you know, by now you uh, you as a band have I'm, overcome that... We're earning that, that yeah. respect, yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I truly believe so. Um, I'm... We still have to grow, we still have to learn, and all that good stuff, and uh -huh. especially in, in writing the next album, which yeah. will be mostly our own material. Yeah. But other than that, um, we're just going to go for it. I don't care what, you know, other people think, you know, they're just girls. Well, yeah, come and see us play. We'll change your mind. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, how, uh, how are you with, with the new album? What's, what's the situation? We're writing now for the next record. How much so you, what, what do you do? Do you just come over for, for We the just came over you, for this show. On tour. You weren't with Ozzy until recently. Yeah, it, um, 10 days ago we were done. Yeah, yeah. Flew out here to do this show, fly back to LA, start rehearsing in about a week, yeah. start putting the new songs together. I'm excited. Yeah. Because, I mean, this time the band's actually sitting down as a band and we're writing, yeah. and this next record will be Vixen. Yeah, well, what was the problem before? I mean, well, the problem yeah, before was, people wrote songs yeah, we had, stuff, yeah. Hat, it was half and yeah. half, and then collaboration and stuff. And this time, I mean, it was it was great. Yeah. It opened doors for us, you know, because uh -huh. we had Richard Marks helping, you know, yeah. and Spencer yeah, Crocker yeah, yeah, and all yeah. those guys. This time, we're confident enough that we can write the song. I mean, you'll wait till you get the material. We're totally psyched. How, how do you write? I mean, have you been writing on the road while you were... You We've were... been coming up with ideas on the road, but never actually putting them together because we didn't get a sound check very much. Uh -huh. That's when the, we would yeah, put songs yeah, together. When, you can, yeah, yeah. when you're opening in this three-band build, most likely you don't get a sound no, check. No, exactly. So we did. Yeah. So maybe we'd get together in rooms and, and write together and stuff, but I actually have to sit behind my kit and play with them, you know, yeah, yeah. or use a drum machine, whatever. But now we're off. So we get the chance to go in rehearsal, lay all the ideas down, and record them. And uh -huh. What cool. was the best tour you did? Was it was it good with Ozzy or? It was great with Ozzy, yeah. but it was great with the Scorpions. It was very different for each one. Uh huh. But, so I can't say I'm not going to choose between the two because they were both equally as fun. Mm -hmm. So uh, people have been helping you because you're you're good, or because you're girls, or because you're good. Because we're good. Yeah. Because in fact, because you're girls, they're going to think, oh no. Band. But when they, like Scorpions, the first time they saw us, they went, wow, they're really good. And they yeah, said it in yeah, interviews, too. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying we're virtuosos, yeah. nothing like that. We're just a good straight ahead rock band. If you were to turn around and listen to the music, you wouldn't know it was girls except for the lead singer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There you go. Yeah. Um, so you're going to write the new album all by yourself? You're not going to uh, yeah, collaboration? Yeah, I mean, if, well, if somebody comes up with a great song, yeah. we're open to ideas. We'll say, yeah, come on down, uh -huh. but write it with the band, yeah. and then we'll, we'll see what happens. But we're, we got so many ideas, we want to do ours first. That's understandable. Because, yeah. uh, I mean, the singles that you've been releasing in this country, they all went pretty well. I mean, they've always yeah. been, like, top 20 and stuff like that, and it was really, really successful. So, uh, I, you know... Is that what you're trying to do, like get someone to write you a wonderful single? And then, no, uh-uh. You know? We're just concentrating on writing great songs. Whether it's a single or not, well, we'll see. Because mm -hmm. you can't fake people. You can't fake yeah, them out. Yeah. Fans just know. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, they just wrote that for radio. You can tell. Yeah. 
you know. So no. But what you hear on the radio is pretty much what we are. Mm -hmm. Love made me cry and edge of yeah. a broken heart. Yeah. We have the harder edge like cruising and hellraisers. Next no, up. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty balanced album altogether. I mean, though you say you know Riley and everything, but it's just half and half. I mean, yeah. half outside and half band. Uh -huh. when, when you're planning getting a new album out? Early next year. 1990. Yeah, early January, January, February. February. Yeah. You think you're uh, you can't go out on your own already, or it's too early? We could do auditoriums on our own, yeah. you know, 4,000 yeah. seats, yeah. but uh, the big venues, not yet, not quite yet, which is fine. Yeah, as, as, as... I wouldn't mind going out with Ozzy and the Scorpions again. There's a lot of Van Halen. Yeah. I want to go out with those guys too. I mean, my yeah. idols, forget about it. Uh -huh. My big chance. Um, you, um, in America, are you... I mean, is it the same sort of success that you had over here in Europe, or it's it's you know, still growing? No. I mean, it's, here you're like top, top band, top 20 band. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, um, all the singles have done extremely well. Well, Love Made Me, yeah. that single did good here, it didn't do in the States. Yeah. It didn't do nearly what it did here. Yeah. It's, it's different, but um, I think because we were on tour and we played live, yeah. America accepted us more. On the, on the record, it was hard for them to believe it was even us playing on the record. So we definitely, we said, let's go on tour, let's show these people we can really play, because they, they weren't sure. Uh -huh. But we won them over, and, and, and yeah, we are doing really good there. Um, Billboard writes about us and stuff, so. Yeah. And to be behind you? Yes. Yeah. They show our videos a lot. Yeah. Um, I've never seen your video, actually. You haven't? Because I don't get MTV over here. Well, you know what? Like yeah. I said, Love Made Me is the one that, yeah. that single didn't do well, so they don't play that video. Ah, right. But Edge and Crime, they played a lot. Uh-huh. No, it's just because I haven't got cable. I so, remember uh, also, MTV now has that Hard 60. Do you watch Hard 60? Uh... Heavy Metal Hour, every day from 3 to 4. Well, that's the American. Yeah. Well, over here it's different. Over here there was the, uh, the Metal the, Hammer, the Metal Hammer Baby Brothers, and now it's, it's over and done. And they don't do that anymore? No, now it's called uh, Headbangers Ball. Really? They have that it's every a, Saturday night yeah, in the U.S.? Yeah. They yeah, have, they, they play they, us on they, that? They do, they do the, uh, the, the sponsorship for the European one. Really? Um, well, I noticed that, um, that England is a lot more pop. Yeah. If you watch TV, yeah. you see just like Pally Minogue yes, and all yeah. those people. They yeah. play. <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen the, the actual time they did, but there's, there's a thing called the Char Show on Saturday, uh, Saturday lunch, uh, and they have like, you know, all the top videos, and they have the rock chart, and you were, I think you were on a couple of times. Cool. Uh, but I didn't Good, all the support. Chance, uh, we need that support. Yeah, yeah but, uh, no, now, I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Not They're not doing it no more? Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. Now it's like bangers you'll, Yeah, you'll just come up with something different, because oh, yeah. kids want to see heavy metal. Uh -huh. The more the more TV takes away from it, the more they're like, we want it. You know how rebellious they are. Do, do you think you owe something? Because I mean, there, ha there has been attempts before of, uh, uh, of getting uh, all female bands together. Uh, do, you, do I think we're different? Yeah, but they never quite succeeded. They yeah, quite I know what you're saying. Like the Runaways, the, you know, they went to a certain yeah, point and they and split up. The Go Go's, which isn't uh, heavy rock, but. Yeah. Girl Bang school. The Bangles is more into it. Bangles, you know, it's not, it's, they're more poppy. Yeah, they're more poppy. Not in our league. Yeah, so it's not quite rock band. I definitely yeah. think we're going to be around for a long time. Yeah. We got the attitude. I think we're talented. Yeah. We know what it's going to take. We love what we do. There's no ego problem in this band uh -huh. because it's all four. Each yeah. one of us equally wants to get the attention. You know, whatever. Yeah. And we work well together. I think that's what it takes. Uh -huh. it, if there's one member in the band that doesn't give 100%, it's not going to work. Because yeah. yeah, you have that, you're only as good as your weakest point, you know? That'll just fuck it up for everybody. So, yeah, we're going to be around for a long time. We will vixenize you all. Well, you could be vixenized as already quite oh, okay. a lot. Okay, well, there you go. I mean, last, you're officially vixenized. I mean, I mean last, last year, you've been doing a lot of promotion. I mean, you, you spent a, an awful lot of time in Europe doing promotion. Well, yeah, we did a whole promo the album, tour. You came over when Bon Jovi was in yeah. Donington, and then you stayed over. And yeah. Place, you know, We're, I'm telling you, we've been out since last June. So yeah. it's time to take a little break and regroup yeah. and get all our fresh ideas and start a new record. Uh-huh. As a scene change, I mean, like, um, you say you all have the attitude, etc., etc. But you were, you were not quite, you know, when you started last year in June, you didn't have a, a long 
career as a live band behind when we were like, you know, like yeah. you. Have you changed between each other? I mean, you have to adjust to, to each other because you get you get you got to know each other more. Yeah, you you each bend. Yeah. You know, there's certain. I mean, we don't get. A, everybody has their quarrels and stuff. Yeah. But you learn what each person likes and dislikes, uh -huh. so yeah. you kind of overcome that, and you know what'll bug that person, so you don't do it. Yeah. You know, but when you've been on the road for a couple months, that's nothing. But when you've been on the road for a year or two years, then it yeah. starts to. But that'll happen with anybody. Uh -huh. But basically, we get along fine. Yeah, so it's... Oh, we're not little kids. Yeah. And we were 18, 19 years old. Yeah, yeah. See, I think that was a problem with the Runaways. They were just little girls. They, they, yeah. they were a band that were thrown together. Yeah. And they did really well for them. We're people that we chose each other. Yeah. And we sat down and talked to each other. And we really, it's really thought out. Uh-huh. No manager picked us and put us together. We picked ourselves, I, I, and we picked a manager. Yeah. How are we doing with this one? We nearly, uh, yeah, just, well, that's one question. Yeah? Fine, yeah. we've got one more. Okay. okay. So I'm saying you're fairly business-orientated, you know. Well, yeah. rock and roll is a business, too, but don't let that get in the way of fun. Some people take it too seriously. It's like, have a good time, forget about it. Yeah. You know, you got to have fun. Isn't that what it's all about? No. Good time, yeah. good music. Yeah, good time, good music, enjoy yourself. There you go. Uh, yeah. That's why I'm in it. Just don't get too much exploited. Uh, yeah, time. well, you got to be careful about that. Yeah. But as long as you're focused as a yeah. band, uh -huh. well, we know how we want to be sold. We know how we want to be marketed. Yeah. If we didn't, it wouldn't work. Yeah, so Because you have these people that say, no, you should be wearing bras and bikinis. Then you have somebody else that says, no, you should wear turtlenecks. And you have somebody else that says, oh, you should paint your face, paint your hair. Well, well. it's like, no, this is what we are. Yeah. Sell us the way we are. Okay, well, the obvious one, why all female band? Is it convenient or to prove it for Um, I think Jan, the guitar player, just started it with their buddies. Mm. And when you're 15, 16, your buddies are mainly girls. <laughs> yeah. She said, you know, there was all these bands like on her block and stuff, and they were all guys. And she said, well, I want to do that. I want to have a band. So I want to get my friends together. And that's how it started, and it just sort of stayed that way. Mm -hmm. But you came in later on, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Well, Janet's been with her for like five years. Janet stole her out of a top 40 band after she'd done a zillion other things. She's, I mean, she's really very well trained and knows how to sing, and she's very good. So mm -hmm. Well, we know you are a teacher as well, aren't you? Oh, yeah, at a, the Base Institute of Technology in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It's real cool, it's real enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It's a bit different from being a band, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I like it, though. It keeps me on my toes. Mm -hmm. The students there are all, like, you know, 18 to about 30 years old and up on all the latest stuff, you know. As soon as I started teaching there, I called it Billy Sheen and go, Show me all this stuff that you're doing, because all my students want to know. Because <laughs> he's like their god, you know. Mm -hmm. So it really keeps me on my toes. But the band thing is, you know, definitely number one for everybody, including myself. That's the best thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not like being in a female band. That's not prove a point to a certain band. That's, oh, not that's not why. Like, not like not why I joined. I don't think that was why you joined. It was just it was a good band. For me, anyway, I wanted to play hard rock, and no guy hard rock bands were calling. You know? <laughs> and when I called one in Los Angeles, they just laughed at me and hung up. So you know, wasn't real open to letting females into all guy hard rock bands. So. Mm -hmm. Now I remember reading some like a few years ago, a quite interesting quote. Someone who I don't remember what it was he said, "What the reason an Eddie Van Halen miss Eddie Van Halen? Why there has never been?" A female departure like that. Mm. Why? I mean, why do you think it's that? Mm -hmm. She took this band a long time to get a record deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just the, you know, well defined roles that, you know, the girls are the groupies and the guys are on stage. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, because I never had that. I never had any desire to be the groupie. I wanted to get up there and do it. <laughs> you know, forget that. I want to be the one up there. So I don't know where that ever came from, but... Uh,
I mean, there's, along with that, I mean, there's still not that many um, young women learning to play instruments and stuff. There's mm. still more of them that are singers, but there are more now that are playing like guitar and bass and drums than there was like 10 years ago. Mm. And maybe that's just, you know, the advent of bands like, well, you know, the Runaways, but then with more success, like the Go-Go's, at least people got used to seeing it. Yeah. You know, and the band was, of course. Mm. I mean, you're, you're with more on its edge. Yeah. Music. A lot more aggressive mm. attitude. I mean, are you aggressive on sort of stage, or is that just what mm. you... They were all yeah, we are, but not overly. Yeah, I mean, mm. we're not like hardcore bitches or anything. <laughs> we're all just like determined and know what we want, you know, like if somebody is saying, well, you know, we think that this would be a good idea for you girls to do, and if we don't like it, we go, no! <laughs> you know, we're not going to do that. Yeah. But on the other hand, you know, we're also business-minded enough yes. to know that, that you know, we have to work with people and mm -hmm. you have to be able to get along and, mm -hmm. and all that kind of compromise. Of yeah. <laughs> people are in that big way. Yeah. But you told me just now that she's been in the band for five years, mm -hmm. which means the band has been together for a while now, mm -hmm. with different members, I suppose. So how come it took that long to get back with you? Because, I mean, I just told of you, when, three weeks ago, from, you know, seeing posters and, yeah. in, uh, around mm -hmm. the walls. Well, it, it took a long time, first of all, to get the band right, mm -hmm. yeah. to get the members all, um, be, you know, the, the object was to be just a great band, you know, in order to do that, everyone has to be able to play as well as the guys, because we don't, you know, I mean, we're not really that competitive, but if we were, our, we would, you know, want to compete with the best, mm -hmm. so it's like, um, that took a while to get that right, and plus to get the right managers and the whole team involved that had the same ideas and the same you know, ideas for the future that we had. Right. So once we found left bank management, that that's when things really started to fall together. They saw it. The light went on. Yeah. Bing. All right. <laughs> yeah, I think they tried to transform the band into something it wasn't. You no, know, they tried to help us along on our own, you know, mm -hmm. our own ideas. I mean, what what were the differences between and after? before and after the result of this match. I mean, was the image wise or music wise or nothing sorry. nothing really different. Everything just better. Everything tighter, everything more um, focused, you know. I mean they didn't they didn't change anything. Just made everything better and bigger. You know, mm -hmm. helped us get the deal and the money and the you know, yeah. all of that kind of stuff that, that obviously we had none of. Mm. Now the album has been produced by different people, like the names. Now why all this, you know, bunch of producers are not using one, only one? Would it be better to just go, you know, get along with one producer and get everything out with them? Well, when we started working with um, David Cole and Rick Nera, David Cole was working at Capitol and he only had a certain amount of time before he was, was going to go to the MCA. So we said, okay, well, David said, I'll, I'll do five songs with them, which turned into eight. And once we started going, things were going good. So then we figured, okay, well, we have two, maybe three more songs, and we, we always wanted to work with Spencer Cropper. He was the guy we always thought, okay, this guy's cool, let's try to work with him. So he heard this. Uh, one of the songs that he wanted to produce, he said, I'd like to do this too. Well, we got in the studio, that one song turned into three songs, mm. just because we got on a roll and it felt so good in his studio, because it was like being at home, you know, it was like recording in your own living room. And then uh, we thought we were done. You can go for a minute. <laughs> 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 oh, geez, come on. Um, well, like Janet said, we thought we were done with the album. And to go back a little ways, we had met Richard Marks when he was recording his album, and he came to our showcase for the record company. And then he was off on tour and selling millions of records and making a big name for himself and everything, so he was really busy. But 
at that time we had said, yeah, you know, we should work together, we should do something in the future. So, we finished the record, it's Christmas, we're all on Christmas vacation, we come back, and um, Richard calls up and says, hey, I've got this great song idea for you guys, I really want you to check it out. And so on his Christmas vacation time, we went into rehearsal, jammed out the song, which he was very cool about us putting our own stamp on, and he was really fun to work with, and um, he called up Few Waybill the day before we were supposed to record the song, he said, hey, help me with these lyrics, I got, you know, I got this basic start, but finish them for me, okay? And we went into the studio, recorded the song in like a day and a half or something, and uh, that's how that whole thing happened, it was great, he produced it, he wrote it with Fee, and it was, it was great, he was really cool to work with, very talented. No, I've only listened to the single, because the album is not fun. I don't mm. think I've not fun today. But the single has it's got two uh, songs which are written by someone else. Now, is in the album the, the songs been written by you, or is also been used in outside practice? Both. Mm. There's the Malphite stuff, and then there's some stuff that we wrote that we wrote individually with outside people right. and then some stuff that we were all wrote together and then some stuff that the guitar player and I wrote. Mm -hmm. So it's all different. Which kept it very interesting. You know, kept the mm -hmm. album from, from being, you know, when you hear, sometimes you hear an album and you know that the same person wrote every song, you can just tell. It's like hearing the same song ten times over. Yeah, old. only just a little bit different. So it was, I think it was really good for us as performers, you know, to be able to plus the world is still full of great songs, you know, why not, why not use a few of them? Yeah, our, our basic rule of thumb is that when all four of us like a song, we know it belongs on the record. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter who wrote it. Because it's rare. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hate that chorus. Oh, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so what about the night, uh, your live experience? Have you been playing a lot? Recently, or? Uh, I mean, just know. whatever. Yeah. We did before the record, before we got the record deal. Mm -hmm. After we got the record deal, deal, it was boom, immediate concentrate on, you know, the material and, and the making of the record. And then after we recorded the record, of course, all this promo stuff started happening. Videos. So we've played a few shows in the last few months. But not, not ever two in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Did you get the to go to Masters of Rock? So I remember last time. Yeah. Did you go? Yeah. Well, you actually played that. No, we didn't get to play. Um, we almost got to play, <laughs> and then somebody decided they didn't want us on the bill. Oh, oh. cool. I think <laughs> well, we were just we they were wanted just an inappropriate type of music for who was mm -hmm. being replaced. They said, no, that's the wrong kind of music for who we need to. Yeah, it was for the band that canceled. Megadeth, you know, canceled and they wanted another... Oh, Megadeth? Yeah, they yeah. wanted another band like that, and obviously that's not... But we're not like mm -hmm. that, so... Oh, yeah. yeah. So we, we were real disappointed. <laughs> no. Yeah. We were real disappointed, to say the least, so. mm -hmm. But, I mean, we'll we'll be back to play, and that's what we are. We're a live rock band, so we'll be touring, you know, the U.S., Europe, Japan, Australia, mm -hmm. Canada, you know, anywhere we can for as long as we can, probably be year, either, again, either the end of this year or sometime next year. <laughs> we don't know, but nothing definite yet. No, we know for a male band, for the backstage area, it's like full of people and stuff. <laughs> oh, is, this, is it the same for a female band? You get a lot of male groupies. <laughs> what they like? Mostly pretty polite. <laughs> All different kinds. It's it's different, you know, because girl groupies are, I think, are a little bit even more pushy than the guy groupies. Mm -hmm. You know, because girl groupies just throw themselves at, you know, guys like to play it a little bit more cool sometimes. <laughs> but um, and sometimes they get drunk and get real crazy and, mm -hmm. you know, like scream at the security guards and, you know, punch them. And, but most of the time they're, like you said, pretty polite. Do you have any funny experience that uh, you like to talk about? She's got a great story. What? <laughs> the menu. Oh! <laughs> 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 you came up to Jan, right? 
and this guy comes up. Well, he didn't really, he just put it on the stage. Oh, okay. Well, with a note. A note. And he looked really, he said, you know, you know, this real sweet looking kid. He puts this note on stage. We thought, oh, it's probably a request, you know, for a song or something. Open it up and it's got the filthiest note I've ever seen in my life. It said, on tonight's menu, and then it went on to like describe, you know, his body parts, steamed and steamed in its own juices and all this horribly disgusting stuff. What was that? We laughed. It was someplace in Michigan, I think. In you know, mid Midwest America where you wouldn't expect that to happen. <laughs> it gets colder. <laughs> yeah. And when, and we were playing in the DMZ too and they had um they were taking off like their underwear and stuff. On stage. <laughs> it was terrible. Someone would write little notes on them too. Mm -hmm. you know, one of them had actually heart, um, you know, boxer shorts with little red hearts on them. You wrote a little note on them and threw them up onto the stage. Funny guys. We will now. <laughs> we always had big big guys on our road crew. We never had mm -hmm. official bodyguards, but we always had, you know, big guys hanging around if anything happened, but it was never very bad. Now it's getting worse. Yeah. Now it'll be on such a different scale. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when we get to start playing really big places, you know, some opening act and stuff. It'll be how do you know the you like looking forward to that. Definitely. What we do best. So what do you think that you should uh, uh, you should, uh, what do you say that you should for this? Headline in Donington. Mm. Not bad, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no hesitation there. <laughs> no, I mean we just it's just we'll just go for it. Yeah, it's like it's like we're, you know, ready to have a baby any day, you know, with mm -hmm. the singles just being released and everything, we're just anticipating, mm -hmm. you know, whatever happens, whatever happens, you know, we're definitely going to get out there and play, no matter if the record dies tomorrow. We're going to be out there on. playing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what will you do when you get a bit some fans and uh, everybody's following on the street and you can buy what you want? Ah, I'll worry about it when we, if we ever get there. That sounds <laughs> fun to me. Right now, I just want to get a car with air conditioning and a stereo. And, stuff. <laughs> and just play in front of a lot of people. This is going to be the thrill of life. Yeah. To play in front of a lot of people. To play in front of five-digit numbers of people is going to be amazing. Mm. And so that's what we're just talking about. Right it's going to be even more amazing when we when we finally get to headline and it's, it's, it's all him to you. Mm. You know what I mean? It's no, going to be great, really you know, being an opening act, but you know that they didn't really come to see you. We just mm. be happy to be there. But, I mean, I'm yeah. sure there, yeah. there will be people who will come to see us, but that'll be the real, you know. It'll just keep getting better and better. No, it's sad uh, to also the young girl that wants to start playing what we do and see that it's, uh, so, uh, advice? Yeah, that's not I would just say learn your instrument as well as you can and follow your heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for it. You know, don't don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. You know, because you can do whatever you want to do. You just have to put your mind to it. And your family is always been helping you out and understanding. They've always tried. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there has definitely been misunderstanding, but I think all of our parents now are no, definitely very in supportive. the same camp. Mm -hmm. you, know, you go to all of our hometowns and there's mom and dad checking out the heavy metal magazines, you know. Yeah. <laughs> mom goes to the record store every day. You have to the record yet? My mom and dad do it too. I just talked to them and they go, we went there and they showed us an article you were in, but they didn't have the record. Yeah. They got the promo. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fun. They're very cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> I take some pictures with her. I just want sure. to ask a question. The image seems to be quite important nowadays. I mean, 
different to you is by, you know, you have a very strong image. I mean, is that, do you think it's essential for a band to have a certain image or, or not so much? Well, in hard rock, I think it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you either have the street rock image or, you know, sort of a dressier image like Poison or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or you can go with, you know, more of like a Megadeth image, which is the non-image. Well, but it's still an image. Yeah. You don't see one guy up there in, you know, patent leather pants and some, you know, silky Black. wild outfit and the other guy in jeans and a t-shirt. They all sort of blend together, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's just happens in the 80s that way, you know, with videos and everything. That's real important, even though it's sad. I could care less. Like yeah. That. I mean, I buy albums for the music and that's it, period. Mm -hmm. You know, but the rest of the world doesn't necessarily do it that way. So, you know, because it is the, the MTV generation right yeah, now. Yeah, definitely. And kids glue themselves in front of it. And they want to see X number of images per minute. Yeah, you know? that's what they want. <laughs> so it is it is real important. And we do, I mean, we have to admit, we do love clothes. This is a band that loves clothes. Yes, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> we have fun. And, it, and it, it does say something about, you know, the way you are when we walk down the street together. Mm -hmm. It's obvious we're not just a pack of girls, you know, it's like, whoa, you guys must be in a rock band. Yeah, <laughs> you know, maybe your band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, well, the last question. The last question. The question is how today's in Australia, the accents of your band is. female rock band, we're a rock band. Who happens to be female? I don't know. It's that. Uh, it's that. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard rock with, with a lot of heart.